and I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And welcome to our travel sequence in. And today we're preparing for traveling, so we want to make sure that the body is moving. And um, particularly if you've got long journeys, then stuck in chairs for a long period of time, you need to be sure that your joints and your muscles are all well prepared. And also, when you're traveling by air, the airports and the airplanes themselves just seem to be full of bugs. So you need to boost your immune system before you even go away. So whether you're traveling on holiday or on business, it's always good to be fit and healthy before you travel. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully you're joining in today with us. We're starting with Tadasana, with your feet together. Rolling your shoulders back and down, lifting your sternum chest. Okay, we're coming straight into Audha Hastasana, so try to keep with our poses today, extending all the way up through the center of the body. Okay, so you're gonna take your hands to your chest because we're preparing for our lateral poses. So keep that chest really nicely lifted. And we're gonna come into the jumping action, so jump and spread your feet apart and then put your hands onto your hips for a moment. Roll your shoulders back and down. Extend those arms up, Audhva Hastasana, go and see. Reaching up, reaching up with those arms, pressing into the base of the pose, and now hinging forward, taking the arms forward. Halfway only, keep that back nicely supported, then take the arms down. Keeping the back absolutely extended, nice and level, Push the thighs back strongly, keeping that breadth and broadness in the pose. Breathe. Now, see if you can keep that strength in the legs, pulling up the legs strongly as you come up out of the action. Extending up. And then jumping the legs together, standing in Tadasana. Okay, now take your hands again, Trikonasana. Okay, take your arms right up, wood past us and really reach up. Get a lot of length in the body because this really helps the extension, increases the flow in the body. So we've got to try and get that um, internal energy going. Extend the arms out to the side, turning the feet to your right side. And now keeping that action, reach to your right into Trikonasana, taking the top arm up. So you could have seen in this pose, obviously there's a little bit of um, adjusting to do. Make sure you're rolling this thigh back. Be sure that you're keeping that back hip in and you're lifting this top hip up. This arm's not over going back and then take a breath in and come up. Turning the feet to face forward, so turning those feet, lifting up. And again, going over into Trikonasana, extending the top arm up. Remember in this rotation, getting that rotation in the leg, outer hip in, keeping that arm upright, breathe, take a breath in, and come up, turning the feet and bringing the legs together, stand in Tadasana. Okay, again, fingers to the chest and jump the legs. So hopefully you're keeping up with us. Vibhadrasana one now, rotating those arms, turning that foot in really well now, and the front leg out. You want to see that you keep that lift, keeping that back leg absolutely strong, and make a square with your front leg. Now, try not to take that back leg with you, it's very, very difficult to get that opening, but keep that opening through the center of the body, take a breath in and come up, turning the feet to face center, and now coming to the other side, so turning your right foot in, your left foot out, and then extending into your square. Come into your Vibhadrasana one, keeping that action in the back leg very strongly, lifting up through the center of the body, and then taking a breath in and coming up. Turning the feet face forward and jumping the legs together. Standing Tadasana. Okay, so you're ready? Again, taking those fingers for Prasarita Padrottanasana, taking the fingers to your chest, and jump. All right, now, take the arms up again, rotate the arms, hinge forward, pushing the thighs back, and now taking those arms down, good. 
So keep him the side waist nice and long. Push those thighs away from the torso. You've got to see that these thighs go away. They go away and everything else that you stand for at all. Sorry. And then keeping that action, taking a breath in and coming up. Be sure that the legs are supporting you. And then releasing the arms and bring the legs together. Standing Tadasana. So we just have a little bit of recovery time now before we come into Adhamukha Shavasana. Take a few breaths, standing in Tadasana. Be sure that the weight is moving back into the heels and you're energizing through the front thigh. Or you should have sat them down. And then release it. Okay, we come for Adhamukha Shavasana. Coming from a kneeling position and then taking your hands forward, tuck your toes under and come up into Adam of the And we see that you're pushing back with your thighs nicely and strongly in. Good, keeping the action in the palms. Okay, now we're going to bend the knees and come into Adam of the Forward bend action. So keeping that action, And then coming up out of the pose. Okay, so we're coming for our Bharavajasana twist now. So when we come for our Bharavajasana twist, we have to see that we've got enough support. So we have got blanket here. All right, so the legs are in Dandasana, sitting nice and tall, roll your shoulders back and down. Okay, so some of you have been following the channel, you'll know about Rishasana by now. We put it into quite a few routines, quite a few sequences. Okay, now bending your legs to the side. Now, if you've got a blanket or cushion or even a yoga kit, something to put underneath the buttock so that you can get a little bit of support so your hips are not rolling over to the side. So when you're in this position, just um, do that matter a little bit. Okay. So ground down with your outer hip, your outer hip being the foot side, ground it down strongly, you can see that. And then extend your left arm up and turn. And then take the hand down to the outer side of the thigh and reach that back arm back. Lift the sternum of the chest and roll the shoulder back and down. So you're coming into this twist in action. Most important thing is to get that lift out of the pelvis, but try not to lift that left buttock because that's one of the things that we tend to do just to create more of a twist in the Z here. And get that turn, that surrender. And then releasing, strengthening the legs, Dandasana. So sitting with the legs nice and straight, you can move your Support to the other side if you're using one. Roll your shoulders back and down. Bend your knees and take them to the right side. And then lift up out of the pelvis. So you've got to see that you pop that support in. Okay, and now taking your right hand up. So you've got to see that you extend up and you turn. That's it, and then take the hand down to the outer side of the thigh and get that rotation, lift up through the center of the body. Good. So again, try to keep that right hip down as you turn to the left. Keep that right hip down. And keep that breadth and broadness in your chest and open the chest so much. And then release in, straighten the legs. Stand up. So keeping the legs nice and straight just for a few moments, just uh, recover. We're going to cross the legs now for Sukhasana. So cross your legs. And it, you might find that this is a really uncomfortable position for some of you if you've got really tight hips. And then you can sit on a blanket or a bolster. You sit in Sukhasana, roll your shoulders back and down. And then you're just going to take your arms for a little walk. So you're going to come forward and extend forward. So you're just trying to get 
get some more movement in the back of the hip. And this is a really good pose to do on a regular basis, daily, daily if you can, because this really does open up so many different areas. What highlights our areas where we're quite stiff and extending forward. And then releasing and coming up. You can stay in this pose a little bit longer. I always recommend when you're coming into these poses, especially in, in these sequences and the poses where you can stay a little bit longer, then have a timer by you. Watch the video by all means, but you can stay a little bit longer with these actions. And then crossing the legs the other way. And again, readjusting. And let your hands do the walking. So extend forward. Yeah, this is perfect. And extending, just draw back through the front body so that you can really lift and open the spine, support the spine all the way. So it's not about how far you go. You see Leo is stretching a little bit forward now. It's not how far you go, it's actually keeping that connection with the spine, keeping it really nice and supported, extended in a straight, straight line. So the symmetry is there, it's really key. Quite often you'll find that actually to start with, the back is a little bit rounded and we've got to see that actually we keep it really nicely in alignment. And then release in, straight in the leg. So we come now for set of banda. So set a banda on a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, don't worry, you can use a couple of pillows or some folded Perfect. blankets something yeah. like that just something that ends up being this sort of shape is a, is a good thing to use the bolster's obviously quite nice and handy nice it's useful and also it's really nice along the back so you sit right on the front edge of the bolster and then you take yourself back like this and roll the whole of the chest you can see here the curvature of the chest um, over the bolster and, and then once you've turned the arms then you can start to straighten the legs with resistance with resistance so keep that lift through the center of the body and again you can put your timer on for this action so this is all about passive extending, and it may be that you find this is not passive at all, it's quite, quite, um, quite an extension through the centre of the body. If you find that you do get a little bit of aggravation going on in the back, then just bend the knees and see that you're getting enough extension out of the pelvis as you resist with the legs when you straighten them. So you have to practice this a little bit. Um, before actually you, you master it um, completely. So you see that you just soften the eyes and come into this action. So again, as I said, you know, you can stay in this for a little bit longer. We're going to move on with the sequencing now. Um, but please do have a look at the sequence as a complete sequence and there may be areas where you want to stay a little bit longer. And that's absolutely fine. Okay, rolling to the right side when you come out of the pose and then coming up. So now we're coming into um, we're coming into Subtabadakanasana. So the Subtabadakanasana is with the soles of feet together on the bottom. It's a really nice way of practicing. Now we're going to also bring in an add-on sequence of inversions so if you are um, adding the inversions to this little sequence then um, you can do this after your Suttabhadakanasana we will put it all in a playlist and then rotating the arms and this is just a delightful action to gradually release the tensions release the muscular body so if sometimes you find you're fighting you're battling with those muscles then 
just give it a little bit of time and just let those thighs completely release and relax. Be aware of your breath in this pose so this gives you an opportunity to really observe the mind, the body and the breath. So we're going to be finishing our video now but um, if you wish to stay in this pose then please do. Um, so we hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed our video then please do press the like button or even subscribe. Namaste.